Well, one of the things that came out, I think, like after Tupac passed away, that really wasn't talked about that much uh, when when he was here, you know, is that he kind of had a little a little bit of issue with Ice Cube. You know, I, I I've heard these recordings where he kind of felt like Ice Cube was kind of taking his style or taking the energy from from hit him up and and kind of make him bow down and. You know, I think he yeah. mentioned in the interview he wanted to talk to Ice Cube about it, you know. Wow, you heard that in the interview? Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, it, it, it's out there to where he's like, you know, yeah, I've heard it. Man, I think they probably, I, I think I think um, they respected each other at the, you know what I mean? I think Cube had to respect, you know, even back in the day, I think I heard a little, when, when Cube switched his style up, I heard a little pock in him, you know what I mean? Um I heard a little, a little in him, so I guess Pop probably, you know what I mean, felt he wanted to holler at him. But that's what rappers do, you know what I mean? But I guess back then it was different. <laughs> Hip hop was different. If you took somebody's style back you gotta, then, you got to at least give him his credit. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you confronted Ice Cube at one point. I confronted Ice Cube because, once again, I, I was very young and ignorant, hot headed. I was in the studio with a guy named One Eye. Shout out to One Eye. He was very, you know what I mean? I hope I ain't mess anything up. Um, he took me in the studio, and I think Pop, I, I thought Q was dissing Pac on one of these songs, you know what I mean? And I was the type of person that my loyalty come before my career. Like, how can I get, I need to clarify this before, because the dude wanted me to get on the song. So myself as a solo artist probably would have been bigger than what it ever been if I would have got on that song, because that song became a hit. What Cube did. Um, Which song was it? It was um, uh, you can do it. What is it? Uh, I forget the you name. You can do it. Put your back. Yeah, that, that. I don't really like to say these words again because oh, okay. <laughs> because um, of my religion. You know what I mean? I don't want to promote this thing, but it was a song that was a hit. It was a hit song that the guy wanted me to get on it. So he was like, "Come up there, I'm gonna put you on the song." And I'm just a young hothead. You know what I mean? Not thinking about further my career. My loyalty with Pac, because Pac came to the hood, got me from my hood, saved me. I feel like he saved my life. So me, because I was I was young, immature, hot-headed, you know what I mean? I wasn't thinking about my career, so I asked, I asked Cube, like, yeah, man, so was you dissing Pac and when you did that? He was shocked, because it was only me, him, and one eye in the studio. And he's like, no, I wasn't dissing Pac. And I was like, why? Well, right. But I never, so of course, after that, he didn't put me on the song, you know? <laughs> I ruined the opportunity to be on the song with Cube. <laughs> did you come at him crazy or were you just like you know hey man you know what's even i don't think i didn't come at him crazy but i, I i'm sure he still because he knew i was from the outlaws and he's still looking at it like but why you he know what that mean you you he he in my studio session asking me did i diss his homie after that he ain't gonna be like okay man let's get together and get on the song he probably felt like you know that was kind of rude you know what i mean and um so that i ruined that opportunity <laughs> wow. Okay. And Cube was one of my favorite rappers, you know what I mean? But I still was looking at it like, man, if he dissing Pac, I don't want to be on a song with him. That's how I was back then. I mean, he did say some things. You know, there was that line, uh, no California love, just California slugs. Yeah, see. You know? <laughs> I mean, so there was like little things out there. Yeah, so that that's was... probably, I forget exactly what I thought, but it might have been these type of things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I don't, I don't think you were coming out of like, yeah, you know what I'm saying left field with it. No, where, Cube the you OG know. man, I, I, I got a lot of like Cube the OG, bro. You know I got because growing up I used to only listen to Cube, Scarface, Pac. I didn't really listen to a lot of East Coast rappers. You That's know? crazy. Me neither. I didn't listen to East Coast till <laughs> like till Biggie kind of came around. Yeah, I never heard a Biggie, Biggie record besides what comes on television. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I seen you did an album with Johnny J, and it never yeah, came Johnny out. Johnny J never came out. Um, you know, one day I get a call, I, I kind of, I became Muslim and I didn't really want to be with the outlaws anymore because I was trying to change my life. One of the first things that I wanted to stop doing is cussing, cuss words. So I decided to leave the outlaws and just start doing my own thing. And Johnny J called me one day and he was like, move, man, I just, I always seen the potential in you. Let me do, let me produce a whole album on you. And um, which we did, you know, I went, we did a whole album. And I remember this is a time when people like Baby, Slim, they was coming in the studio asking Johnny J for beats for Lil Wayne and them. This is how big Johnny J, he was an underrated producer, you know what I mean? And um, so he produced a whole album on me. I didn't say no cuss words. But at that particular time, I started to get more serious into my religion. 
he wanted me to come and do a, a perform a performance at a club I think in Philadelphia. And I'm Muslim now, so I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be around alcohol. I don't smoke. I don't drink anymore, and I don't deal with women anymore unless I get married. So I said to myself, how can I be in a club doing a rap song when it's pretty much I'm all that stuff that I'm running away with? I'm gonna be around. So I came to him. I said, bro, I can't do that. And I said, matter of fact, I don't really want to be in the music industry anymore. I said, after this record, can you please hurry up and put the record label out because. I just want to get away from this industry. You know what I mean? I just want to retire, get away from it. And he was like, okay, give me some time. I'll put it out. He was in discussion with Interscope Records of distributing his record label. And one year went past. He didn't put it out. And I'll call him like, man, please. I, 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 at this time, I wanted to get up and go to Puerto Rico. I mean, not Puerto Rico, uh, Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? And I wanted to move there. And I'm like, can you hurry up and put the album out so I can move on with my life? And he, Another year went by, he didn't put it out, then eventually he released me from the record label. He's like, okay, you want you want to go? I'll release you from the contract. So I always had a lot of respect for Johnny J. He's always been a good dude to me. You know, then a couple months later, he went to prison and died. You know, so I really didn't get to see him the last couple, you know what I mean, the last days before he passed away. But even though he, he released me from his label, it was never no hard feelings, you know? I guess he really, he respected me. I knew Johnny J since I was 15, 16 years old. And he, he knew that I was taking my religion seriously. So he's like, you know what? If he want to go, he can go. You know? Well, that's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of music came out after yes. Tupac passed away. And, yes. you know, we, we got the Machiavelli 2 early. Yes, and the yes, swap right. meets, you know, we yeah, got, yeah, I think it went up to all the way up to like Machiavelli 17 wow. or something. Crazy, yes. You yes. know, yeah, it, it was wild, man. You know, I mean, <laughs> these were really good records, too. I mean, these were like, like Machiavelli 2, I don't wow, know, wow, wow. It, like we bumped the hell out of it, <laughs> you know, like it, yeah. it was a, it was dope. Okay. Um, But but uh, the family and, mm -hmm. and Death Row starts to remake these records. Yes. Do you feel like a lot of these records were made by Johnny J? Yes. The original. Do you feel yes. like Johnny J should have been involved? Of course. In like the remake of these songs? He was the original one. I think so. I think Johnny J, they also like, like did him the way they kind of did Gobi. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Machiavelli, Johnny J wasn't on no songs. For some reason, I don't, you know, later on, um, Johnny J wasn't on no Machiavelli song, but later on, Johnny J kind of told me why he wasn't. When I started dealing with him, he said because, you know, Suge was trying to basically steal his rights from him. You know, he said Suge was trying to come and say, you need to give me all your publishing. And Pac was trying to push it along, like, Johnny J, just do a deal, you know, with Suge, give him half of what you want. And Johnny J was like, no, I work hard for this. Why do I have to give this guy, you know, percentages of my record company? I mean, my record. So when he didn't agree on it, he stopped coming to death row and he stopped doing producing on Pac, you know? So I guess they probably look at it like, well, since he wasn't working with Pac when he passed away, we'll just remix his songs. Mm. This is politics with the music industry, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What was it like when you guys were making Machiavelli? I wasn't around until the last song because my grandmother passed away. So I was in Jersey and, and I didn't even want to, I was having so much fun after my grandmother passed, not even fun, just being back with my family. I didn't really want to go back, you know? He was working on an album and the last, he called me one day, he made Molly, who was his assistant, call me one day and was like, Pac said, you need to come home, you ready? And I was like, okay, just send the airline ticket. I ain't even want to go back. So when I went back, the album was finished, except for the last song, Life of an Outlaw. And that's when I got on that song and they, he ended it, I believe, it, I don't know if he ended the album with it, but that's the last song. That's the reason why I'm only on one song, you know, Life of an Outlaw. And that's why when he asked me, would you die for me? I said on oh, my grandmother, because my grandmother just passed. So that whole, my verse was really mo emotional. You know what I mean? So that was the last song I ever done with him, the Machiavelli album. Man, okay. Yeah, that, man. That album was, you know, when it came out, man, it was like, yo, this is like some... You know. It was deep. The words, you know, the words, it was very deep. You know what I mean? I think he was talking about a lot of stuff he went through, life and death, you know, God, you know, heaven. He was speaking about a lot of stuff. It was, the, the, lyrics, the lyrics was definitely deep.